We believe the fundamental backdrop for U.S. high yield is very well supported. For U.S. credit, corporate defaults are projected to be low in 2022 and 2023. This is partly because some of the weakest companies defaulted in 2020. Additionally, it's because the U.S. policy response from both the fiscal and monetary side were both large and bold. This has left both U.S. companies and consumers in a significantly better position to repay debt and support the U.S. economy than they were even before the pandemic. U.S. economic growth and demand for goods and services is likely to remain above historical averages. This is because the U.S. consumer and companies are in very strong positions to repay their debt and consume with excess savings. Should the markets face a Federal Reserve aggressively focused on moderating prices, this potentially will make investors question just how much interest rate risk their portfolios are taking on. We think that this will be a key risk factor for investors as they attempt to identify what parts of their fixed income portfolio they should be focused on. The primary downside to most fixed income portfolios will be the amount of income that a strategy can generate relative to the interest rate risk in the near term. It's important to remember that the high yield market is a very diverse collection of different companies that have taken on debt for a variety of reasons and different purposes. And that really lends itself to active management. So there's always going to be opportunities for us to seek a differentiated return than the broader market. One area where we see a lot of opportunity is companies that took out excess liquidity during 2020. A lot of times they were giving us generous terms to provide them rainy day funds or extra liquidity to make it through the COVID-19 crisis. As a lot of this paper comes due in 2022, we're seeking to reinvest these proceeds into a market that potentially could be giving higher rates. So we think about identifying strategies and managements that have learned from the pandemic that potentially are keeping a larger cushion of liquidity into the next potential U.S. economic downturn. Fixed income investors are usually weighing three main risks in their fixed income decisions. Interest rate risk, credit risk, and liquidity risk. In the current environment, the U.S. Federal Reserve is contemplating raising rates. That's generally because the U.S. economy is growing above trend. Interest rate risk, is generally the largest portfolio risk as we see to introduce downside to a portfolio right now. Structurally, short duration is not attempting to take interest rate risk. If the Fed is increasing interest rate risk, it's because they don't deem credit risk to be a material risk to the portfolio at this point in the economic cycle. And liquidity risk is generally strong in the United States. So it's actually quite elegant solution. 